morning. This one? Good morning. <laughs> okay, we're going to start off this morning with a prayer. Ruby's going to say our prayer for us. Say a prayer for church today. Okay. Go ahead and say a prayer. Thank God, thank you for this day. That Lord is a place that Lord is healthy. Place that we have a good time at church. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to start off this morning uh, singing Worldly Cares a Moment Leave Us in the purple hymn number 26. Now we're going to sing Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, uh, number 43 in our purple hymnal. Thank you. 
read um, a little testimony. Two Christian sisters, Corey and Betsy, were sent to a German concentration camp for hiding Jews. The room was overcrowded and only rancid, flea-infested straw to sleep on. Corey wailed, Betsy, how will we live in this place? Corey, Betsy exclaimed, he's given us the answer in the Bible this morning. Read that part again. Corey read from their smuggled Bible, Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's it, Betsy interrupted. That's his answer. So she prayed, expressing gratitude for being together, for being in a crowded place where more people could hear God's word. And then she gave thanks for the fleas. Corey stopped her. She could not be grateful for the fleas. But Betsy insisted. God says to be thankful in all circumstances, not just pleasant ones. Months passed by. No guards came to their barracks, and so they were able to hold nightly Bible study. The rancid, flea-infested, overcrowded room became a reprieve as many came to know Christ. One day, Betsy came in the barracks and said, I found out why no guards come to our room. This afternoon, there was confusion in my knitting group, and the guards wouldn't come in. Do you know why? Betsy could not keep the triumph from her voice. Because of the fleas. Let's sing, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Hymn 293. sing uh, Lord be glorified hymn number 186 
When Jesus fed the 5,000, he was grieving deeply, having just learned his cousin John the Baptist had been beheaded. He was also weary and had tried to get away to a quiet spot with his apostles for rest. But the crowds followed, and with great compassion, Jesus taught for hours. Seeing the people were hungry, Jesus took five loaves and two fish, and looking up to the heavens, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. The apostles distributed the food to the crowd, the people ate until satisfied, and they gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. God will meet our need. We may not see it yet, but God has promised, and he will do it. Let's sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
are other examples of gratitude in the Bible. Like Daniel, we may offer gratitude to God no matter what we face. Like Jonah, we may offer gratitude to God for hard consequences that bring good repentance. Like Hannah, we may offer gratitude to God for who he is over and what he gives. Like Paul, we may offer gratitude to God, not after, but in the midst of the storm. Like Jesus, we may offer gratitude to God before he supplies our need. Christ, as he lacked food to feed 5,000, instead of focusing on what he lacked, he gave thanks for what he had, five loaves and two fish, and suddenly it was enough. Being grateful in times of distress does not mean that we are pleased with our circumstances. It does mean that through the eyes of faith, we look beyond our challenges. Gratitude in any circumstances. Perhaps it is a first step to becoming whole. Uh, I did walk the talk again this year, and um, the theme last year was... Um, planting seeds. It was my personal theme. It wasn't the theme of the camp. It was my personal theme was planting seeds and letting God do the rest. And this year, it was <laughs> my five loaves and two fishes camp because I just kept thinking, Lord, this is what we have. This is our 20 kids <laughs> and 10 staff, and this is what we have to honor you and to serve you and to serve our community. And so I was like, I would pray, you know, these are our meager offerings, and just bless it, and have it be bountiful, and bring fruit. Um, and it did. There was fruit that was born that week, and so I was very blessed with that. So that, that was the theme of, of um, our meager offerings. Uh, God will take those, and he will um, bless us, and um, take those things that we sometimes are not grateful for, and he will bring fruit. Um, so now we're going to sing uh, Alleluia, which is a camp song, so we'll sing that um, a cappella. So sing loud, please. Alleluia, Alleluia, Thank you. 
Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this next service uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'd like to uh, thank the ladies for their, their beautiful music. I know in your bulletin it says Woman's Trio, and it was supposed to be, but uh, our sister Kathy Hood wasn't feeling very well this morning, so you might keep her in your prayers. Uh, to, hopefully she can get to feeling better soon. Um, also in our bulletin, a couple of quick uh, um, corrections. You'll see under the morning message, uh, it is not going to be Elder Dan Norman. He spoke last week. Uh, it is uh, uh, Deacon Cullen Madea is going to be speaking for us here today. So I uh, just wanted to clarify that. Um, but yes, I'd like to, to welcome you all here and just tell you I'm excited to be able to be here with you this morning. It's always wonderful to gather together in the name of the Lord. Uh, and I'd like to thank everyone who's uh, shared this morning, Aubrey with her uh, her music and uh, for the classes this morning and I'd also like to put a, a real special shout out to our sister Jean on the piano today she's filling in uh, kind of last minute pitch hitting for us today so uh, thank you very much Jean for filling in so um, for my uh, for my call to worship today I'm going to be reading from from Psalm 96 and you know this last week I had the opportunity to help out some with uh, with uh, vacation church school um, I see that uh, the Jesus uh, character is still up here from this week. Um, but, uh, and, you know, it was really, really awesome to be able to, to, to work with the kids, many of, many of your kids, this week. And uh, I was always very enthused by their, by their energy, by their passion for, for whatever we were having to do them. But when, we would, when, we would, when they were practicing their songs and they were singing for Jesus, they were very excited. And we did some, uh, Connie did some, uh, some uh, praise uh, back and forth with them, having reciting some praise things, they would get so excited, and they're yelling it, you know, yelling it loud and putting their arms up, even if they didn't always know what to say. They were really excited to put their hands up and, and to praise the Lord. And I don't know if all of them knew what it meant, particularly the littles, but I know it was it was wonderful to see that to see that energy as they praised God. And I just want you guys to think about that as as I as I read this and as we get ready to sing our opening hymn, thinking of of the the wonderful opportunity we have to praise God. So starting here in Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the brethren, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. We will now uh, stand and sing, uh, We Will Glorify.
Adonai, Father, hallelujah to your name. Thank you so much for the big and the small ways that you've blessed everyone here today. Father, as I uh, watched your saints assemble this morning, I was reminded of the, the miracles that are occurring in the lives of our families. Father, um, some of us here today are just barely here. Others are filled with joy. But Lord, it is no mistake that you've brought us together today. Lord, I know there are some that are hurting and struggling and uh, in need of more blessing from you. And Father, I ask that um, you would smile down upon them, that you would comfort them and give them the healing that they need. Father, some are are celebrating the the life within them and Father um, how could any of us ever deny your influence over our lives Lord um, today as we've assembled I, I pray that um, you might be inspired by Colin's words and that you would um, help him share what it is that he uh, would bring to us today Father, you are uh, glorious and majestic and uh, worthy of praise. And, and so all God's people said, amen. In the Old Testament, there is a phrase that comes up a couple of dozen times, especially in the book of Leviticus. Uh, every time it talks about different types of sacrifice or different animals being sacrificed, that type of thing. They end with a phrase that's very much like this. The priest shall burn it upon the altar Upon the wood that is upon the fire, it is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Now that term sweet savor can be translated a fragrant odor, but you get the drift whether you say sweet savor or fragrant odor. It's pleasing to the Lord. That's what was happening with the sacrifices, was pleasing to the Lord. Now that phrase is only used two times in the New Testament. The first one is in Ephesians. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Okay? So Christ is the fulfillment of, of those Old Testament sacrifices, he is our sacrifice to God. And then it is used one other time in Philippians. Paul begins this statement. He said, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. You were the only ones Basically, he's saying here, you were the only ones who looked after my needs. No other church did that. No other church even inquired. But you did. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. So when I was in Thessalonica, the Thessalonians didn't take care of my needs. Guess who did? Okay? It was the Philippians. He says, sent once and again. So several times, they took care of his needs. And then he says this, I have all and abound. 
I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. So he's using that same phrase there that was used to talk about the sacrifices, that was used to talk about the sacrifice of Christ. And he was saying, you saints, because you so willingly took care of my needs, your sacrifice is a sweet savor unto God. Let's let our sacrifice this morning, as we look after the needs of the church and the needs of his people, be a sweet savor unto God. Deacons, come forward, please. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to give and to take care of the needs of your people and of your church. Father, sometimes that's a sacrifice for us to do, but we do it willingly because we are part of your work. And we ask, Father, that our sacrifice this morning might be a sweet savor unto you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. For scripture reading this morning, if you would turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to be reading from verses 13 through 19. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess the Son, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us.
Your fire fall, cast out all my fear. Let your fire fall, he loves all I fear. Let your fire fall, cast out all my fear. Let your fire fall, he loves all I fear. Let your fire Good morning, Living Hope. Good morning to all those listening and watching online. I want to start by confessing something to you guys. Um, I put off preparing for this sermon and procrastinated quite a bit, and uh, I feel guilty for it. And um, as I was preparing and sitting down and taking time to set aside for this, the thoughts just started flowing, and uh, even if I don't present it well today, I feel like uh, it's a message that is meant to be given, and uh, God wants you guys to hear it. So, The uh, topic, as you can tell by the video, is fear is a liar. 
And uh, as some of you may know, uh, me and Chris Campbell and Thork Smith are doing a uh, kayak trip across to Missouri coming up in about a week and a half. And uh, I've been trying to go out some mornings and evenings and um, train, if you will, on the lakes that we have in the area, uh, if you call it training. Um, and what I like to do when I'm by myself is listen to music. It's what, uh, it's what speaks to me. It's how I, uh, how I feel the spirit. And I had a uh, Pandora going when I was on the, on the lake and going around, and uh, this song came on. It's one that I know most of you probably know. I saw several of you guys mouthing the words to it as it was playing. And uh, it's just a, a really good song of encouragement uh, for anybody going through battles. So, um, every phrase and statement in that song is about the lie that fear is. In the, uh, I wasn't able to get the official music video, but there's a video if you go to uh, YouTube, and it's the official music video where they have uh, different, I guess, uh, scenarios where people are dealing with certain things in their lives. So if you have a chance to go watch the video, if you haven't seen it already, I would suggest it. Uh, one of them is dealing with cancer and feeling that she's losing hope and that there's no one there to support her. Another one they follow is dealing with losing a loved one and dealing with the empty void that is left and probably trying to understand why. Another one is dealing with bullies and peer pressure and being told that you're not good enough. And then one is dealing with the uh, being terminated from his job at an older age where you may not know what you're going to do, what your next step is. These are all serious and tragic events and can cause us to want to give up. And if you listen to the words in the song and really think about what it's saying, the devil is there to poke and provoke and put thoughts in our heads when these hard times, when he sees the opportunity. Fear is a liar. What is fear as referred to in this song? What does it or he do to us as individuals and as a body? And how do we cast out this fear in our lives and draw closer to God? So I want to ask you this. Is there anyone in here, and I'm not asking for a show of hands, that doesn't encounter problems in their life where everything goes right, everything is perfect from the littlest little detail to the biggest events? And how many of us have had an event happen in our lives that causes us to question our faith that causes us to lose hope or that causes us to want to give up entirely. Whether we're feeling left out, not being included, not, or being overwhelmed, whether we're stressed out, whether we're being abused or used, whether we're losing a job, a career, and having to start over, or being diagnosed with a sickness or a disease, losing a friend, a loved one, or just a time where nothing seems to be going our way. No matter what the situation is, we all go through times that can cause us to have doubt and fear. And Satan uses fear to keep us from maturing with the God's love. We all have things that we can be fearful of, but do we have to be fearful of them? And the answer is no. We can choose to be fearful and lose faith and take what may seem to be the easy way out and give up, or we can take these events and turn to God and look for the good. God has a reason for everything that he puts us through, every heartache, every trial, every situation, every event that we go through. He has a reason, whether it's to test our faith, to build our relationship, or simply a way for us to grow. There's always a reason. And it's when we're in these situations that the devil moves in and takes advantage of the trial and does what he can to sway us. When he told you you are not good enough, when he told you that you're not right, when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight, 
when he told you you are not worthy, when he told you that you are not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful and that you'll never be enough. How many of us have felt this in our lives? When he told you you were troubled and that you'll forever be alone, when he told you that you should run away and that you'll never find a home, when he told you you were dirty and that you should be ashamed, and when he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. When you think about these statements, do any of them sound like something that would be of God? Satan is the one being referred to in these statements. And we can't live our lives in fear and allow Satan to take advantage of us in these situations. We need to turn to God, keep the faith, and trust in his plan. Satan is the one who is fear in this song, and the devil is a liar. If you have your scriptures with you, if you could turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. It says right here that the devil is the father of lies. There is no truth about him, no truth in him. And now if you'll turn with me to Revelations chapter 12. And we're going to read from verses 8 and then also jump down to verse 12. So Revelation 12, 8. Neither was there place found in heaven for the great dragon who was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and also called Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And then jumping down to 12. And after these things I heard another voice saying, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, yea, and they who dwell upon the islands of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The devil is here with us. He's here on this earth. We see it every day all around us. He is here to tempt us, provoke us, and sway us and do everything that he can to turn us to follow him instead of who we should be following is God. But the devil is a liar. He is the one who takes your breath. He's the one who stops you in your steps. He robs your rest and he steals your happiness. Do anything, does any of that sound like something that we want done? And does any of that sound like something that God would do? Quite the opposite, actually. In fact, you could change one word in every one of these statements, and it would be what God is in our lives. Because God encourages us, and he lifts us up. When he told you that you are good enough, when he told you that you are right, when he told you that you are strong, and you are strong enough to put up a good fight, and that you are worthy, you are loved, and you are beautiful. When he told you that you will always be enough and you will never be alone. That you should not run away because you will always have a home. You are cleansed and should not be ashamed. Everyone is given grace and everyone can be changed. That is God. I'd like to go back to the uh, first John that we read for the uh, scripture reading, first John chapter four, and look at a couple of verses there. In verse 16, it says, "And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us, because God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him." 
And then also in 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So do we live in fear? Or do we live in love? Are we going to allow Satan to be our influence? Or are we going to turn to God to be our influence? Fear is a liar. He will take your breath away. God is love, and he will give you breath. Fear is a liar and stops you in your steps. God is love and will lead you in your steps. Fear is a liar and will rob you of your rest and steal your happiness. But God is love and will give you rest and he will give you happiness. Cast your fears into the fire. Looking back at when I was younger and going to youth camps every summer, I always left the camps with a spiritual high, as most of the kids do. Uh, you're set away from the world, you're focusing on one thing, and there's not, should not be that distraction of the world and electronics and everything that we have now that keep you from growing with, uh, in your relationship. And all week you have several opportunities with classes and different activities that are offered to help grow your faith and grow your relationship with the Lord. But the one activity that I uh, get the most out of is toward the end of camp. And by then, you're kind of getting all your, I guess, craziness out of the way, hanging out with your friends, you're focusing more on the spiritual. And they always have, usually have some sort of dedication service or a, uh, a campfire or some kind of class that, uh, that kind of, I guess, lets you really think about what you're doing with your life and what your life and what is, uh, what's keeping you from, from the Lord. And in this service or class, we're told to think about the things in our lives that were keeping us from the Lord. And these could be problems that we're going through. They could be sins that we're committing. They could be temptations that we have in our lives. They could be doubts or fears that we have. Anything that's interfering with our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And then usually we are asked to either write them down on a piece of paper and put them on a board or post them to the cross or put them in the fire depending on the camp in which you are doing. Just something to signify you giving it to the Lord. And uh, this morning I would like to do something similar to that. I don't have a fire, and I was thinking about using that cross on the back, but it's not portable, so it'd be kind of hard to move around. And What I do have is Jesus right behind me. And uh, I didn't mean to put him right there, but it's kind of nice to have him watching over my shoulder. Um, so in a little bit, I'm going to move him up to the front, and I'm going to put a basket there. And, um, well, first I want to thank Connie Smith and the... Uh, the vacation church school because they let me use this. They were going to return it yesterday and I stopped her. So, um, so right now, my helpers who are hopefully listening to me over there, they have some pencils that they will be passing out to you guys. And um, as they're passing out these pencils, I had a couple inserts put in the bulletins for everybody, and if you don't have a bulletin, I put two, or tried to have two put in each one. So if you don't have a bulletin, ask the person next to you, because maybe they can give you one of theirs. Um, in the bulletins, you'll find a slip of paper, and I put a few prompts on there to help get started, or you can write whatever you want. This is between you and God. You don't have to explain any situations. You don't have to go into grave detail because the Lord knows what you're going to write down and what's in your heart. And 
And on this piece of paper, it can be a promise, it can be a rededication, it can be a vow to quit something, it can be a vow to start something, it can be something that you feel is being done to you, that, that the devil is doing to cause fear or doubt in your life. And as you place these in the basket at Jesus' feet, you are giving it to the Lord. As the refrain of the song goes, let your fire fall and cast out all your fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all that I feel. So as they're still passing those out, I'm going to move, this, move Jesus in the front. And then I will uh, have that song played in a little bit. Not quite yet, though. I'm going to ask that the song be played one more time, and as you're thinking and writing down, when you are done, you can either keep it to yourself, or you can bring it up and put it in the basket at Jesus' feet. Take some time and think about something that fear, or in this case the devil, is doing to keep you from the Lord. Let's cast our fears in the fire, or in this case at Jesus' feet, and feel his love as we give these things to him. Let your fire fall, 
cast out all my fear Let your fire fall, your love is all I fear Let your fire fall and cast out all my fear Let your fire fall, your love is all I fear Let your fire Well, thank you, Colin, uh, for your wonderful words. Um, and what a wonderful message we've been given here today that uh, God is not the author of fear. It does not come from him, but that fear casteth out perfect love. And, and we know that uh, our God is there for us no matter what we're going through, that those lies that Satan tell can be cast out by him so that we know the truth, that God loves us and is there for us. We'll now uh, stand and, and close our service. Uh, slight correction in the bulletin. The closing hymn is uh, As the Deer, which is 548 in the Celebration hymnal. hymnal. So uh, we stand and sing that with me, please.
our most kind and gracious, amazing Heavenly Father. I thank you so much for this opportunity that we've had to gather here today, to, to come together in your name and to praise you and to remember that you're with us. And, and I thank you for this message that we've had today, that we've had, just help us, Lord, to remember that the fear around us and the, the things that the devil whispers to us are not true, Lord, but that you are the truth, that, uh, that you love us and that you're always with us. And I ask that your spirit will go with us from this place, that we might feel you with us in our lives, that as we, as we walk about and go about our days, that we will know that you're with us and that uh, you are guiding us in, in that which we, we go about. And I love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A few quick announcements. Um, a little update on Brother Jack, getting better every day. I know we've had to announce uh, at the hospital's request that he not have visitors. Maybe that'll be lifted one of these days. It hasn't been yet. Um, he's getting stronger every day. He's, re he's rehabbing now and probably maybe even today will be moved to the fourth floor, which is a rehab uh, floor at the hospital. So Jack's been greatly blessed. He's in some pain and doesn't take a lot of pain medication for it. So his son came into town this week. So he's got family, more, even more family here with him now. So keep praying for Brother Jack. Uh, Je Brother Jeff indicated to me that he needs a couple of volunteers for song services in upcoming weeks. If you're willing to lead a song service, please get with Jeff. Muriel, do you want to? have a couple of things to say excuse me <laughs> um, it seems like all of God's people have many many needs and um, just want to let you know about a project that team Jesus is doing uh, they're uh, working with a group and with a backpack and school supplies um, effort on the on August 14th and so uh, they're receiving donations of school supplies and backpacks uh, for that event and um, brother Bob gave me permission to have us um, have a table and we'll we will collect donations for back to school uh, for the next three weeks and, and then we will donate those to team Jesus and uh, they're also, we're also needing uh, committed, regular committed volunteers for the second Saturday cleanups. And um, so if you can pray about that and you and your family, and if you're able to give an hour, hour and a half on the second Saturday every month to help do uh, outreach, we're interested in doing um, helping anyone, including church groups, that would be, that could be outreach, it could be a, a non-restoration church, whoever is doing something good in the community, we're wanting to step into that and help them do their project, whether it's cleanup or if it's assisting a widow or just whatever. We'll be making contact with various churches in the area because we want to be able to serve at the level of other groups as well as of just individuals. So thank you so much. Yes. Backpacks. I, I, he didn't, he didn't say. He did not specify. Uh-uh. Summer series tonight, song service begins at 6 at Waldo. Speaker will be Brian Wilton. The preaching service will start at 6.30. Free McLean Brothers concert, Saturday, July 29th. The doors open at 7. Concert begins at 7.30. Saturday, August 5th at 6.30, there's a concert in the park at Saints Haven Restoration Branch. Those are nice events, and you're well, everybody's invited. Ladies Lemonade Luncheon, Saturday, August 12th, here at the church, 10 a.m. 
please sign up at the back uh, under the bulletin boards. Wedding shower for Paul Cornish and Monica will be at Joy Kane's house on August 19th at 10 a.m. Uh, they are registered on Amazon. Priesthood uh, request visit forms are still at the back. We, received, we have received a lot of those, and a lot of those visits will be taking place uh, this week from those that we've already received those from. Um, there's some little soldiers. I thought they were right. Where are they? Okay. She's got some little soldiers. If your kids have little soldiers for, from vacation church school, please pick those up. Birthday this week, uh, Friday, Andrew Neal. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andrew. Happy birthday to you. Aubrey's a Sunday. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Um, I appreciate the offertory message our brother Ken gave this morning on sacrifice. And the pastor is going to ask the congregation for a sacrifice. We've talked to you in the past recent weeks about the advocacy program that we've the priesthood has put into place. Um, Richard and Robin have, are advocating for Don Zan, as you know, and are doing a lot for her, and others are contributing. There's another family in our branch that uh, has particular needs, and uh, they have an advocate. Ivan is their advocate and has done, has done a lot of work for that family. That family is in need. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to come together and support that family. One of uh, the families in the congregation has put up a $5,000 match fund. And the first, the first Sunday in August, we're going to have a special offering for the Hendricks family. And anything that's not on your envelope that's not specifically indicated for anything else is going to go to the Hendricks family. And brothers and sisters, we need to raise another $5,000. We need to raise $10,000 for that family. They need a new roof. The roof leaks. And they need cash to get them through the end of the year. We've already started to re receive donations from some of the brothers and sisters in this branch. And on August the 6th, I want us to raise $10,000 for that family. Please be prayerful about it. It's going to be a sacrifice. We're going to have to make a sacrifice to help that family. They're in need. If they could help themselves, they would. They need our help at this time, and I, I hope you'll be prayerful about the sacrifice you'll make. Yes? Can we make checks Just make checks out, checks out to offering. Every, all the offering that's, that Sunday will go to the, to the Hendricks family. Just make it out to the church. God bless. Have a good week. Take your 
Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle. Whose hearts are blazing? So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Praying to our Father in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon.